but that makes so much sense. If you have any amount of oil or moisture, how are you supposed to stick to a metal pole? Did you know that pole dancing is like in, they actually have competitions, I believe, is it an Olympic sport? Or is it not in the Olympics yet? Salem Mitchell is a model with freckles and I actually know who she is. She is phenomenal. And if you don't know her banana story, we're gonna talk about it. And we're also gonna talk about her skincare routine. And we're gonna see which products she uses over her freckled skin and discuss whether or not freckles need special skincare and whether or not any of these products are something that you might want to or not want to use. Hi, my name is Salem Mitchell and I'm gonna show you my everyday skincare and beauty routine. I use Cetaphil Daily Facial Cleanser. It's pretty basic drugstore brand. I love it. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Oh my gosh. I mean, if it's not broken, don't fix it. I have mixed reactions because we're off to a great but not so great start. This is a drugstore product from a famous celebrity model. Wow. I am so happy to see a celebrity using something that is affordable and accessible for people. She is accessible. Did I just say accessible like interval, but an accessible interval? I love an accessible, affordable product. The problem is Cetaphil is not cruelty free. I really care about cruelty free skincare. And while it is great and very basic, there are other things that are just as great and very basic that I feel don't leave any sticky film on the skin and are cruelty free and don't harm the animals. The Salimo brand from Amazon has some great products that are very comparable, but they are cruelty free. There are a lot of things that are dermatologists recommended and approved that are cruelty free, inexpensive and effective. And she's right, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. I'm gonna leave some of my favorites right here in the fancy product shelf, which it looks like Salem Mitchell did as well. Love to see it. But overall, especially for the price point, this is shocking to start out with and I'm already loving what I'm seeing. I wasn't allowed to wear makeup growing up. My parents really wanted me to feel confident in my skin and in my freckles. So I really got into skincare after modeling and coming home from photo shoots and having like tons of makeup on. And that's kind of how I learned about all the different products I use now. Next in my skincare routine, I use Kiehl's Cucumber Herbal Toner. I realized even with cleansing, sometimes I would still have mascara and residue in my inner eyelids and stuff like that. So toner has definitely helped eliminate excess dirt that I thought I got and didn't at all. If you need toner to remove leftover mascara or makeup residue, it means your cleanser isn't doing it for you, honey. I would recommend a double cleanse because of this, using an oil cleanser along with some sort of a regular cleanser. You know, if she wanted to, she could use the Inky List Oak Cleansing Balm. If she has more dry skin, if she has more oily skin, you could even use something like the Peach and Lily Oil, really good. There are so many options that I think would be better than using a toner. And I love that she mentioned that she didn't grow up wearing makeup. I didn't either. It was my desperation to cover my acne that allowed me to learn about it through aesthetic school. Literally, I went to aesthetic school back in 2008 to learn makeup, fell in love with skincare in 2009, and like 12 years later, we now, big, big time pass. We're now here. But I have so much respect for her and her journey because of an affinity, dealing with my skin struggles being acne and her skin struggles being freckles, and her learning to appreciate and embrace that. Very similar to what I tried to do and still try to do with my my skin. We gotta talk about this Kiehl's toner because I don't actually love this. I feel like it's a very expensive cucumber scented thing. Very Mario Badesco of them. And I know Kiehl's is made in San Francisco. A lot of people love it. I just don't think this is all that. I would say a really good piece of skincare advice I've gotten from my mom is not to do too much makeup and too much skincare. My mom also has freckles and I think that that's helped me feel super confident in my own skin. Her mom sounds like she's giving her some solid advice, but let's actually look at this Kiehl's toner and see what is inside of it. For $25? This actually isn't terrible. Apparently this is an alcohol and fragrance free version and it has allantoin. Like I actually kind of love to see those. This has penylene and propylene glycol, but it does have some extracts and some camphor. I might know Kiehl's an apology because this is, I, I, like when I'm actually looking at the ingredients, I don't actually hate this. Now, of course you have to try products on your skin to know how they're going to work because you need to turn and learn ingredients to get the basics of the story. But when you actually try it on your skin, it might be different. Overall, I don't hate this as much as I thought I would because most of their stuff is overly fragranced and overpriced. I wouldn't totally recommend it. I don't know what her skin concerns are, if any, it doesn't look like she has acne or dryness or anything like that. But other than like the camphor in here, this is not bad. Wow, I am pleasantly surprised. I take back my previous statements. Thank you very much. Okay, next I do this really early in my skincare routine. This is the Fenty Beauty Pro Lip Scrubber. And I love this as like a lip exfoliator. 
My lips are kind of big and in the winter they get so dry and flaky and it's ridiculous. So exfoliating them is a very pivotal step to the success of my beauty routine. Obsessed with Rihanna, I've been blessed to work with her on Savage Fenty as well as Fenty Skin and that was a big deal for me. And actually when I modeled Fenty Skin, that was where I learned about this lip exfoliating brush. If you have not seen her work, again, absolutely stunning, gorgeous. I love that she is bringing freckles into the spotlight. It's something to embrace and not to, you know, feel bad about. Because when I was growing up, kids were teased for their freckles just the way I was teased for my acne. I fucking love her. I actually thought that this was a like hydrating stick. I didn't think that this was a lip scrub, but this is a lip scrub. Now I am currently using a St. Ives lip scrub. I know, shocker. And this one is much more expensive, but I've actually wanted to get my hands on this. The criticism I've heard about this product is that when you're using Using it because it's in like a stick formula it kind of crumbles or apparently people go through it really 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 quickly and because of how expensive it is they're like oh my gosh I'm using it up so fast the ingredients in here are also really good they have things like jojoba oil we have caprylic triglyceride really hydrating and really scrub a dub dubby hopefully without you know scratching up the lips the only thing is that this Fenty product does have beeswax which you know I, I do not use which is very sad for me now for $16 it's probably one of the most affordable Fenty skin products that you can get but it is really Really gorgeous yeah if anyone can tell me about a lip scrub stick that you like don't use through super fast please tell me with like a fine grain sugar not like a big chunky scratchy sugar and I will try it and buy it so that you don't have to okay another favorite of mine that I also learned on set is these Peter Thomas Roth eye gel patches anything that has cucumber or hydra in the name somehow that's like a buzzword for me to buy it something about it just sounds like it's going to refresh me and change my life It's the little spa tease, you know? Having a platform where, you know, I get tons of feedback, both positive and negative. It's really difficult for me to balance um, keeping an authentic connection with my audience while also keeping my boundaries and protecting myself from people who want to be rude and to bring me down and maybe say negative things about my freckles or my hair. My rule of thumb with clapping back is always, it's only necessary if it's going to help more than one person and more than just me. I love her philosophy yes and did you know that clapping back on Twitter is actually how she got her entire modeling career so first off these eye patches I love a good eye patch the cucumber she's talking about yeah cucumber is nice hydrating it sounds like maybe she has more sensitive or dry skin she likes that hydration but when it comes to her skin she of course has these gorgeous freckles well unfortunately in the day and age of the internet some people are bitches and um, decided to basically bully her online for having her freckles and she decided on Twitter that instead of letting that get to her she just was going to pose with a bruised banana that's right she literally sat there with a bruised banana and the tweet went viral because she's fucking gorgeous and these apples were just being dicks right so she ends up getting calls from ford models from teen vogue so many people and she becomes an advocate for anti-bullying online and actually starts modeling embracing her freckles and it's all because she decided to stand up and say no you don't get to bully me because of my freckles which are a totally normal thing on the skin that i deserve to feel good about I love how she's also paving that path for other young girls, women, men, and non-binary friends who maybe have freckles or have been teased for them. And she's basically saying, no, we don't need to let this negatively define us. We get to embrace our beauty and its uniquity, and we don't need to cover these up or conceal them or try to conform to the needs of society. And um, with these eye patches, there are other eye patches that I love more. You know that I am obsessed with the Wander Beauty Gold eye patches. Those are delightful. And these eye patches specifically are the water drench hyaluronic ones. They are expensive. They're like $55 with $10. Packs. They're 60, that makes them like $2 an application because there's 30 in there. They're not terrible. They do have caffeine, they have hyaluronic acid, they have ceramides, and actually the formula here is really good. I don't know if Peter Thomas Roth is or is not cruelty-free. I think Dr. Dennis Gross is cruelty-free. I don't know about Peter Thomas Roth, I'll need to check in on that. But with marshmallow root and glycerin and ceramides, these hydrating ingredients along with caffeine and licorice for a little bit of help with any under eye puffiness or kind of dark spots, these are great! But what's even greater is her philosophy around her entire skincare routine and living and embracing her skin. My next step is this Tatcha Dewy Skin Mist. I really love this. And when I do this, I take a nice deep breath and just release everything for my day. 
actually been loving and living for some of these skincare mists recently. There are other ones that I love, such as the one from Topicals, this one from Euphoria, and Bubble Skincare. There's a lot, but the Tatcha one might have to be on my list. It is vegan and cruelty-free, and a lot of Tatcha products are super, super, super overpriced, especially when I look at this, it's like, why are we spending so much money on this? But so many people fucking love them, and I don't know if it's because they look like a fairy tale book. Like if a fairy tale book was skincare, it would be Tatcha. Or if there is something amazing about the formulation of this that goes beyond the ingredients. Because remember, we always turn and learn our ingredients to understand what's in here, but this doesn't tell us the entire story about where it's sourced, how it's combined, how it's formulated, how it penetrates into the skin, etc. And although turning and learning is an essential first step, there are other things. And just like I was wrong about Kiehl's, I wonder if I need to try this Tatcha. The Tatcha. The thing is, I think this is like $60. Why? For a spray that is mainly water, I just, I wonder, especially for a product that is mainly water, why are we spending 50 bucks on this? Maybe I just have to try. I mean, do you want me to try it? You want me to try and buy it so you don't have to? This spray specifically has glycerin, squalene, licorice, rice. Good, hydrating. Really not gonna cure anything, obviously, um, but it's not bad. The thing is that there are fragrances and alcohols in here, which I don't always love to see in skincare sprays. You know, but sometimes it can be a little bit nice. It's actually hilarious that I sniffed this one because this one is fragrance free, which is probably why I like it so much. Um, but this is great. I don't know about that one. Maybe I need to try it. And she looks gorgeous when she's spraying it. So if she loves it, continue using it. But know that there are other options if you want to save a little money. Tatcha, maybe I gotta try it. You tell me and I'll buy it and I'll try it. But for now, I'm sticking with this. This is my favorite moisturizer. I use about this much. My favorite makeup look that I've ever done for a shoot is, I did a photo shoot with this amazing makeup artist and photographer named Raul Alejandro. And he gave me this amazing worldly alien-esque beauty look and I had this egg in my hand. I felt so transformed. I think he found the perfect balance between transforming me, but also accentuating my natural features. This is so fun. She looks so glowy and hydrated. I wonder if this La Creme Concentrate helped with this at all. Now, I've never personally tried this product. I know it's sold at a lot of French pharmacies. Dr. Shireen Idris is a dermatologist that you should absolutely know who now has a skincare line that we need to review, but she actually loves and swears by this product. I don't think it's cruelty-free, so I haven't tried it, but it looks like it's sold on Amazon and it has everything from aloe vera to shea butter to soy proteins, which are great, and then beeswax, which I don't agree with. It doesn't look bad. The price is right at 26 bucks. I wish I could get some ingredients and a vegan cruelty-free version. This does appear to be a very creamy, thick texture. So I'm assuming that Sayla Mitchell probably has more dry skin naturally, or she really loves a hydrated glow, but whatever she's doing, like it is working for her skin. So, um, 10 out of 10 for Salem as herself. My next step are my skin worship dew drops. These are combined of different natural oils. I don't use too much because oil is a lot and my hands are already oily and I can't really always put the excess on my body. I like to pole dance and so if I'm going to pole dancing, you can't have any lotion on or you will slip off the pole. I enjoy doing it as a hobby, but I have so much respect for women who dance to survive because it's really challenging to get on a pole not prepared for the conditions of the pole. Wow, I did not think about that, but that makes so much sense. If you have any amount of oil or moisture, how are you supposed to stick to a metal pole? Did you know that pole dancing is like, in, they actually have competitions. I believe, is it an Olympic sport? Or is it not in the Olympics yet? There is legit professional pole dancing and the absolute insane strength, grace, talent of some of these male, female, and non-binary pole dancers is f***ing amazing. Wow, what a cool hobby. Like that's actually really cool. Now when it comes to this oil, I can't speak to it for uh, pole dancing purposes personally, but I love the way that she respects her skin in relation to how she respects the sport and the art. This skin worship oil is $50 and you know what? The ingredients are quite interesting. We have organic jojoba oil, which you know is one of my favorite oils because it mimics what our skin naturally produces. We have caprylic triglyceride, avocado. We have lemon, mint, and vanilla. Now, while I might not love that for like the skin portion because lemon, mint, and vanilla could be irritating, those are like three of my favorite f***ing scents. I don't know how they are together, but I kind of want to buy this. I don't know if I would put it on my skin, but I might put it on my hands because I don't need to grip onto anything that I'm going to slide and fall off of. At least I hope not. Maybe I should try. I don't know. But overall, this actually looks like some oil drops that I might want to get behind. A little bit pricey for what they are, but again, this looks like an indie brand. And 
as someone who wants to put my money where my morals are, I would rather pay more to help out an indie brand that has a beautiful backstory or does something fucking awesome that is vegan and cruelty free, rather than pay my money to some giant beauty conglomerate to go buy the executives another fucking yacht. You know what I mean? Next, I use this Paula's Choice sunscreen. I really like this because it's SPF 50, which is super strong. And I prefer a dewy look on my skin. This is great because I don't think it's super matte and it keeps me looking all glossy and shiny all day. I have lighter skin, but it's really hard as a black woman to find sunscreen that doesn't leave a white cast on your face. My dad is darker than me and he would always say, we're black, we don't need sunscreen. And that was the biggest myth that I ever heard. I remember being in high school, I went to the beach, did not wear sunscreen. I got a sunburn and I peeled right here and I lost a freckle. From that day, I was like, I'm not listening to my dad. I'm listening to the professionals and I'm going to be wearing sunscreen. Oh my God, yes to everything she's saying. So first off, I love that she understands that sunscreen is for everyone. Doesn't matter what your skin tone is, sunscreen is essential because all skin can get skin cancer. And yes, all skin can burn and peel and be hurt by the damaging rays of the sun. I'm sure she comes from a wonderful family. I'm sure her dad has given her lots of other great advice, but sometimes our parents aren't always right. And this is something that I actually, when I was growing up, I really struggled with because I thought my parents knew everything or I like I thought that their word was gospel and as I started to get older I started to question some of the things that they said or realize that maybe they don't know it all and as an adult myself who's now in my 30s I'm like we're all just trying to and figure it out here and having really good sources of information like the experts that she spoke about doctors dermatologists medical estheticians research paper regular estheticians experts in this field that is so refreshing to hear because sometimes we do need to find those other people those trusted sources who can help us filter through information and get us to where we need to be. For example, don't come running to me for car battery fixings. You know, the car mechanics, that's not my expertise. But when it comes to skincare, definitely something I can help with. With my parents, I couldn't come to them for organizational support. They didn't teach me how to wash for or take care of my naturally curly hair or my skin and my acne. But they did teach me many wonderful things about nature, about eco-friendly gardening, about hybrid fruit plants, which yes, is a fucking thing. Have you ever heard of a prapple? It's a pear apple. You can graft a pear onto an apple tree and it grows. Anyways, my grandma taught me that. But it's little things like this that as we grow up can actually be quite shocking. At least it was for me. And I love that she has come to terms with her skin and knowing where she will or won't take that skincare advice from. There are so many great sunscreens that don't flash back. This is one of them. Paula's Choice Youth Extending Day Fluid is so fucking good. It is excellent. Excellent. Black Girl Sunscreen is made by black women for other black women or anybody with any skin tone or any skin color because it doesn't flash back. It is excellent. Another really great option that I've been loving recently is Good Molecules. They have a brand new sunscreen that's mineral and it doesn't flash back even on darker skin tones. I love Salem Mitchell. I love what she stands for. I love the way she's embracing her skin. And when it comes to her freckles, she doesn't need to treat them any differently than you or I do. A lot of people think that you have to treat freckles differently with different products or you have to cover them with makeup or accentuate them by adding more. Whether you choose to embrace them, to cover them, or whatever the fuck you choose to do, having good, healthy skin is the most important. And having a great cleanser, some good treatment options, and a wonderful sunscreen is the best way to do that. And I feel like she did that here. There are some things that I think are a little bit overpriced or that I wouldn't personally buy just because they have beeswax in them. We could definitely cruelty freeify this routine, but I've left all of my cruelty free dupes right here, as well as what I would recommend swapping out. But I literally, her philosophy, her application, the fact that she's wearing a sunscreen, I give this like a nine out of 10. This is an excellent routine that um, I would just swap a couple things out based on cruelty free preferences. I am going to stay hydrated both orally and topically. I'm actually gonna spray a little bit of this because it's fragrance free. You know, I better use this up before I go buy a Tatcha one. And I'm also going to reapply my SPF, which I would recommend that you do too. Always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. And I cannot wait to see you in this next video or even in like the comments of her Instagram photos. I'm gonna go leave a bunch of emojis and comments. Hopefully Instagram won't flag them for like spam, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna go do. Okay, <laughs> love you guys, bye.